Good afternoon and welcome to second event of Stand with Afghan Women. In August 2021, following the takeover of Afghanistan by the Taliban, the European Network of Migrant Women organized an international solidarity event in which uh, we committed uh, to not forget about Afghan women in Afghanistan and also outside Afghanistan. Um, and uh, we uh, said that we will organize another event. And now after six months, we are organizing another public international event jointly with our members who actively support and led by the Afghan women, in, uh, Afghan women refugees in Europe. Today, we have some amazing Afghan women activists from inside Afghanistan and outside Afghanistan who will be speaking to us about the current situation of women and girls in Afghanistan and what actions the women are taking in the country. They will also highlight how the women inside Afghanistan view the Western countries and uh, Western countries and politicians and their actions toward the Afghan people, Afghan women and the Taliban. Um, first of all, I would like to welcome uh, Basira Tahiri. She's an advocacy coordinator of female managers of Afghanistan and former coordinator of girls high school in Afghanistan. Uh, she is in Afghanistan right now and uh, she will uh, talk to us about the situation of uh, Afghan women and Afghan uh, women activists inside Afghanistan. Welcome Tahiri Jan, the floor is yours. به نام خدا سلام دارم خدمت همه بانوهای گیرامی و بانوانی که امشب با آنها بیشتر چراها آشنا میشم فرسندم که از یک دریچه میتونیم مشکلات و چالش های زنان به جهانیان برسیم ما تاسفانه پانزه اگوست سال 2021 یک فاجیه یک اتفاق ناگواری در افغانستان به وجود آمد که ایره میتونم به اطمینان کامل بگم اکثریت از افغان ها اکثریت از خصوص زن ها غیر قابل باور و غیر قابل تحمل یک فاجیه ای که همگی ما به یک حالتی قرار داد که حتی خود نمیتونستیم پیدا کنیم یک کابوسی که حتی مدت های زیاد احساس بد و احساس افسردگی داشتیم با تأسف که این یک حقیقت بود حقیقتی که تا فعلا زنان افغانستان و کل مردم افغانستان آن رو برو هست و ای که چی وقت ای کابوس ختم خواهد شد هیچ زن افغانی و هیچ فرد افغانی ایره نبدون ما فکر کنم فروج جان معرفی کردم بازم باشه چشم ما به سیده تاییدیم رئیس کمیتی داخلی شبکه مدیران زن و ریاست یک سازمان و مدنی جوانان نواندیش در حیرات دارم و مدیر یک از مدارس دولتی در ولایت هرات هستم و بیشتر فعالیت های ما برای دفاع از حقوق زن ها و خصوص زن که در ادارات دولتی کار میکردم و مدت تقریبا چهار سال ما دادخواهی از حقوق زنان در هرات و همچنین در مرکز داشتم مورد دیگه که با تأسف روز به روز چالش ها و مشکلات زنان و آشیه کشاندن زنان در افغانستان بیشتر بیشتر شده میره همه تصور داشتیم برای باور بودیم با صحبت های خود مسئولین حکومتی امارت اسلامی که زنان بانند 20 سال قبل که مادران ما تجربه کردم مادران ما دوران سیاه تجربه کردم آنگونه نخواهد اما روی هم رفته هر روز هر روز متوجه میشیم که نه تجربه ای که مادران ما داشت داریم ما هم اون تجربه می داریم ما هم با همون وضعیت قرار میگیریم که مادران ما قانونشین بودن و اجازه هیچ فعالیتی نداشتن 
ابتدا از حفظ و حذف کردن ریاست وزارت امور زنان شروع میکنه که اولین اقدامی که طالبا کردن وزارت امور زنان حذف کردن و بعد می به مورد دیگری که خیلی از خانم هایی بودم که در بست هایی که دیدی حتی وزارت که ما داریم اینجا خانم هایی که با تأسف امروز اکثریت اکثریت حتی به افغانستان نیستم و دوم از که کسایی هم بودم اینجا از وزیفه منفق شدم و همه خانه میشیم حتی ما در بست چار و بست پنج هم خانم هایی که وجود داشت و ادارات دولتی فعلا هیچ فعالیتی ندارم همه خانه نشین هستم این خودش یک فاجعه است زنانی که قبلا همه کل فعالیت های داشتن امروز بدون محرم اجازه ندارم از خانه بیرون نشم امروز اجازه درس خواندن دختران افغان نداره این موضوعی است که همه ما باید سرزی صحبت داشته باشیم دانشگاه دختران افغان اجازه نداره مدت زیادی میشه که دخترها از آموزیش معروم شدن و اجازه اصیل ندارم که به مکتب برم و درس بخونم و خیلی موالد کوچکی که من نمیخوام این جیب سر مورد بحث کنم اما واقعیت ای ما را متاسفانه تاثیر بد سر ما داشته که حتی همو اجازه رفتن به همام از خانم ها گرفتن این چیز پیج پای افتاده ای که نباید ما این چیز صحبت در این مورد داشته باشم خیلی موارد دیگری زنان در خیلی از ولایت فعلا محکمه سرایی میشن هر روز ویدیو هر روز موارد متوجه هستیم اکسا تصاویر خیلی متوجه هستیم که سرایی محاکمه میشن این چیزیست که در شهن خود طالبا هست و ایر امان گونه که میخواستم امان گونه که قبلا بودم دارم ادامه میدم می بیشتر سر موضوع خانم هایی که مبارزاتی داشتم من نمیگم که اولین نفری که صدای خود بالند کرد مبارزات خود شروع کرد من بودم خیلی از خانم های دیگه هم بودم زمانی که وضعیت خیلی در حالت بد قرار داشتیم و حتی خیلی از خانم ها از وظیفه رفتن معروم شدن اولین اعتراضاتی که ما در هرات داشتیم با تعصب که با کشتن و لطکوب حتی لطکوب لطکوب خودم که پایم شکست با تعصب این مواردی بود که ما در مبارزات خود در دادخواهی های خود رو برو شدیم و فعلا فعلا قضیه داغ که مواردی که موضوع گذشته که میگم که بیشتر هر چی شکنجه شدیم زنا آنقدر این اکاسی نکرده بود و اندازه ای که فعلا خوشحال هستم فعلا فعلا حد اقل این اکاس خوبی داره و امیدوارم که اینا مانی بشه جانی جانی بر این و امیدوارم که باعث بشه جانی جانی که این خانم ها آزاد بشن و راحت بشن ما در هیرات خیلی از خانم ها امرای ما بودم هم تیمی های ما بودم ناپدید شدم خیلی از خانم هایی که امرای ما بودم مبارزه می کردم آسیب رسید در از اون حتی فعلا خودم نمیتونم با اونو حتی دست رسیب بیدا کنم و در حد بر این امتیاب رسیده این و فعلا شکنجه های قابل خانم ها از ولایت های دیگه میبینیم یه یعنی واقعیت غیر قابل باور است برای از, از, از انسانیت دور است که در مقابل خانم ها همچین اتفاقاتی رخ میده مثل تمنا زریاب و خود خیلی از خانم های دیگه که امروز شکنجه میشن و زندانی هستن و تا چل زن که در مزار شریف زندانی هستن و زنهایی که در مزار ناپدید هستن و انواع ولایت ما مثال یک از امکارای خود میگم حد در حد سنگسار رسیده بود بعد از سه ماه پیدا شد وقتی که سپرسان میکنم در حد سنگسار رسید دو که از خانه فرار کرد که تایی که در امن بمانه و قتل های هدفمندی به 
خانم ها صورت میگیره حتی از طریق فامیل ها یک تدار دختر های قابل باور واقعا تعمل کردن نمیشه شنیدن یا که توسط خود فامیل دختر از بین برده شده دختر که مبارزات داشتن به نوی اینا واهدار کردن فامیل که خود اینا دختره خود از بین بود. مواردی که خانم ها به این روزها چی فعالت هایی به خاطر دادخواهی و حقوق خود دارن. میتونم بگم بزرگترین دستاورد اعتراضات یابانی خانم هاست که همه دست به دست هم دادم با یک انسجام با یک اتحادی صدای خود بلند میکنم. همه روزه در خیابان ها صدای ادالت خواهی زنا هست. مبارزات زنا هست. روز 27 سپتامبر روزی بود که ما در هرات هم در ولایت دیگه هم اعتراضات داشتیم که اعتراضات ما به قتل دوستان ما قاتل ما. از اون روز ما حتی نتونستم تیم دوباره داشته باشیم که اعتراضات خواهیم اما میتونم بگم این اعتراضات خیلی موثر واقع شد فعلا ما بلدا با خانم ها جلسات آنلاین می داریم و خاطری برنامه ها و اهداف آینده که آینده زنای افغانستان با این همه سکوتی که تعداد بیشتر از ولایت دارن دیگر نقاست بود ایره مطمئن هستم با آینده نزید با یک اتحاد و یک انسجام قوی زنان افغان با خواهی و خودم همی حال که بیش از 500 شاگرد از مکتب خود فارغ دادم سه دو و هفت نفر از خانم ها در خود سازمانی که من هستم عضویت دارم خیلی کم کم از اینا خود هم با با ما باشم خیلی کم هم با ما باشم پینجا نفر هستم یعنی این چیز محدود, محدود کردم چون می دانم که ابتداد بعضی مواردی هست که احتمال داره فامیل ها مانی بشن اما ای برنامه ها و جلسات و اعتراضات ادامه خواهد داشت و امروز با استادا و همکارای خود فعلا ما در افغانستان سمپ های خانگی ایجاد کردیم برای دخترها که درس بخونن ما خاموش نمیشیم ما را از ادارات دولتی مانی شدن اما ما در خانه کار خود میکنیم فعلا دوستای ما همکارای ما استادا به خصوص سنفای خانگی برای دخترها دارم که دخترها را آموزش میدم درس میدم من میتونم حتی تصاویر از اونا برای شما شریک بسازم که همکارای ما دارن برای سنف هفتم و تا دوازم تدریس میکنم این خودی یک نشان و موفقیتی که انوز هم زنا میخواهم از هر طریقی از هر طریق ممکن حالت ها و برنامه های خود ادامه دیدگاه زنان که در رابطه به قرب و اروپا یاه سازدیم. من یک دو جلسه یک جلسه سازمان ملل به یک جلسه که در ناروی جلسات نشستایی که برگزار شد و فعال نیک میبینم به خصوص خانم های ماتریز که در او به نماینده از خانم های افغانستان حضور داشتم ای هم میتونه یک نوید خوشی از دقل صدای خود برای جهانیان برای رو در رو با طالبا میرسن اما انتظار دارم این نشسته مانند نشسته مذاکرات دوها نشه مذاکرات دوها که متاسفانه به سقوط افغانستان انجام باز نشه این مذاکرات هم با رسمیت بخشیدن طالبها خاتمه پیدا کنه و آن که زنان و افغان میخواه آن که حقوق زن افغان هست باز هم مانند سقوط افغانستان پایمال بشه و امیدواری ما از جامعه جانی به خصوص ایتالی اروپا که خود ناروی میزبان ای نشست بود میزبان این مذاکرات بود ای را برای طالبا وقت ای را ندم که نا امیدوار بر ای باشم که ما به رسمیت شناخته میشیم اگر همچین ادامه پیدا کنن نظر مردم افغانستان در اینجا مهم نباشه نظر زنای افغانستان مهم نباشه ای رو بیتمینان کامل میگو ای خودی و که یک گروه تروریستی که سالهای سال جهان همه بر ای باور بودن که تروریست هستن و حال و 
در افغانستان حکومت می کنم و جامعه جهانی اینا را همه روزه همراه اینا مذاکرات خودشی بکنم این برای ما زن ها قابل باور نیست و نمی توانیم که ایره تعمال کنیم امیدوارم آنچه که حدس ما زن ها هست اون موارد نباشه و آنچه که خواست زن های افغانستان هست مد نظر گرفته باشه و آنچه که من در مورد فعالیت های خود گفتم و از دوستا و زن های افغانستان گفتم حتما اگر دوستا سوالی داشته باشم و خواسته باشم اکثار هم شریک میکنم اما در حد ای که اکس های سمپ های خانگی نشر نشر تشکر اگر سوالی باشه در خود تشکر بسیر جان Thank you so much, Basira Jan. Uh, it was really a great insight on your experiences uh, from inside Afghanistan. And um, you are in Afghanistan, and it's, it's very good to know that you are active. Uh, you're still actively working, not about just the right of Afghan women, but also by having these classes for uh, girls. Although they are not in school, they are a house, but I'm I'm at least happy to hear that you are holding these classes and the girls are not, um, I'm not saying all of them, but at least uh, some of these girls are going to these uh, house, um, schools and houses are learning something and uh, the teachers are sharing their experiences with these girls. This is very, very important. And as you mentioned, it is very important to hold these talks with uh, Taliban, like you say, to recognize things, but not, not to recognize them as a, as a body, as a government as yet, unless they, um, they start recognizing um, certain things for Afghan people and Afghan women. Um, if anyone has, we, we will hold a question and answer at the end of the talks. Um, and um, I'll go to our next, next speaker, Nargiz Nehan, the former Minister of Mines and Petroleum and women's rights activist. Uh, she is now in uh, Norway, uh, if I'm right. And uh, we will listen uh, to her and what she have to say to us, has to say to us. Thank you, Bessie Dejan. Uh Thank you very much for her, John. And um, first of all, I have to thank and compliment the organizers of this program. And um, I, I want actually because uh, um, um, my sister Basira so very well uh, discussed and presented the situation of women in Afghanistan. Uh, I don't want to repeat her. And instead of that, as someone that I have been in the civil society, I have been in the government and I have been in the politics for the last 20 years, um, actually I prefer to provide you some information on the bigger picture of what is happening and how we uh, women in Afghanistan outside and the whole uh, global women movement can organize ourselves uh, to help Afghan women uh, overcome the challenges that you're facing right now. Um, as it was mentioned very well that uh, it has been 10 years that the peace process has started and uh, several countries have been working with the Taliban and trying to convince the Taliban for the peace talks. Uh, it was 2018 that um, Ambassador Khalilzad was appointed at the as a special representative to, uh, to speed up the peace process between uh, uh, the, the Afghan government and the Taliban. Uh, but as soon as he reached out to the Taliban, I remember very well that the briefing that he was giving to us whenever he was coming to Afghanistan, he said that Taliban are saying that they will not hold any um, negotiation with the government side until they don't have an, a negotiation with the US because they see US as a, a party to their party to conflict, not the Afghan government. Although the government was very much hesitant, but because of peace, the government said, okay, go ahead and have the um, negotiation with them. They had 18 months of negotiation, and finally they produced a, a peace deal, which was signed in Doha. And we were expecting that after that, uh, negotiation would start between the Republic side and the Taliban side. But to our shocking and surprise, uh, they demanded release of their 5,000 notorious uh, uh, soldiers, 
Uh, most of these people are responsible for thousands of lives uh, uh, waging uh, suicide attacks in, in Afghanistan. But because of peace, uh, people said, OK, uh, release the 5,000, but make sure that they don't go to a uh, 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 battlefield and they don't uh, fight again. Uh, but on the contrary, that what promised, uh, um, um, and, uh, what, what was promised by the Taliban, on the contrary, they sent all their soldiers back to, uh, to, uh, to defeat and they started fighting, they intensified their fighting. And uh, while the process of the negotiation started with the, with the uh, Republic team, we didn't get anything from that process. All we got was intensified fight. Uh, aggressive uh, and uh, offensive attacks by the Taliban, a uh, capture of province by uh, one by one uh, by the Taliban until they captured Kabul. Uh, so I myself, when I got the invitation to participate in the Oslo talk, my question was that, okay, what concession you got from the Taliban providing them such an important platform in the capital of your country? Can you tell me those concessions? Have you been able to release at least the activists that they have detained? Have you been convinced them to announce before coming to Oslo that at least they will open the door for our girls in Afghanistan? Uh, have you talked to them about allowing a woman to go back to work? Uh, they said, oh, these are the issues that we can discuss and it's important for ice breaking, it's important for trust building. And um, I said, look, for three years, we did trust building and ice breaking with the Taliban in Doha. But what happened that in the process, they won everything and we lost everything. Now we don't trust the Taliban. So if you want to bring in Taliban, especially with what they did with the peace process, that they didn't come with the good faith and they destroyed everything. And we saw what happened. They took Afghanistan half a century back in half a, a year that they are ruling Afghanistan. So I said, well, how do we trust them? And we cannot trust them. And you, do, you need to have become more strategic in your dealing with the Taliban. Um, so uh, it was very unfortunate and I was not happy and uh, that's why I uh, wrote a statement and I excused myself, I said I don't want to be part of uh, this negotiation because until Taliban do not in action demonstrate their good faith for peace, until they do not give some concessions for peace, I don't think uh, that we should start any talk with the Taliban and uh, because we have been given a lot of sacrifices and Taliban side has given no sacrifice and they haven't compromised anything. The time has come that they have to compromise. So this is the situation. Uh, my worry is that the international community is rushing uh, for engaging with the Taliban. Uh, and that's because of the uh, regional and global politics that we have right now, uh, because they want to have some sort of relation with the Taliban. And my worry is that in this whole process, once again, either ex if not explicitly, implicitly, they are compromising women's rights. Uh, for example, they are saying that, oh, we will not recognize Taliban, but we are going to open our embassies in Afghanistan. We are not going to recognize Taliban, but we can invite Taliban to our capitals to come so that we can have talk and we can build trust and we can, uh, um, we can, uh, we can continue discussion. If you recognize them, if you provide them with the support, if you increase their fund, if you bring them to the capitals, so what is left for the Taliban and the recognition to motivate them to actually change their policy? Uh, the other issue that I see is that within Afghanistan, Taliban are, do not have the chain of command that they had last time. That was something that we totally overestimated. We thought the Taliban would come, they will have full control over the country. But what we see right now that there are divisions within the Taliban. If you talk to uh, uh, their, their one group is, uh, is, is hardliners and they don't want to deal uh, with the international community. They say either international community should accept it the way they are and they should not interfere in our internal affairs at all. Uh, the other group understands the uh, international politics and they understand that until they don't meet some certain uh, criteria and conditions of the donor, they cannot engage with them. But right now in six months, they have not been able to come to a conclusion, an agreement amongst themselves and, and, and build that consensus. On top of that, what we see that in every province says depends on who is running the province who is the governor of the Taliban, who are the uh, uh, police chief of the Taliban. Based on that, they are coming with their own policies 
uh, uh, for women and for the citizens in each of the provinces. So you don't find any like uh, co comprehensive uh, chain of command that we had uh, among the Taliban. And the foot soldiers are not listening to their leadership anymore. So uh, for example, as soon as they came, they announced gen uh, the, the national amnesty. They said, everybody is forgiven, just go and do your work. But then their, 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 their commanders in the provinces, their soldiers, they're going after activists, they're going after um, after journalists, they're going after former police chief, uh, police and, and, and other members of the security sector. They torture them, humiliate them, intimidate them and kill them. And they keep on putting the, right, right, uh, the, the, the video of that on the social media and they say, we don't, uh, we don't respect general amnesty, we're national amnesty, and we don't understand what's amnesty. We should torture and we should uh, prosecute these people. So even the minister, their minister uh, of interior went on TV and, 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 and requested and implored to his soldiers to respect the national amnesty, they don't listen to the national amnesty. In terms of formation of the government, I'm sure you must have heard that they have announced their caretaker government. It's all mullahs, uh, all Talib government. There is no uh, uh, educated person amongst them. I mean, they're educated, but Islamic background. There is no woman. There are no uh, representative of other uh, ethnicities. Tajiks, Uzbeks, Hazaras, and even among the Pashtun, they have those hardliners as member, but they don't have uh, uh, people of other ideology from their own ethnicity. And then on top of that, they have started uh, depopulation of uh, minorities in Pineshir and 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 in Daikundi provinces, and um, they are they are taking people's land from them, and they are take they are they are rape, they are they are they are kidnapping and they are abducting women, and they are torturing men. So the worry that I have with the way that we are going on. Uh, this is preparing Afghanistan and laying the foundation, unfortunately, for a very bloody civil war, because people can tolerate one day, two day, or a year, but not more than that. And Taliban really do not know how to run a country. This is our main problem. Even if we try to fix Taliban, Taliban are a group that all they know is violence. All they know is fighting. So my personal, uh, uh, the picture that I see as someone that I've worked in Afghanistan, and I understand how the international politics work, while the world is pushing the Afghan woman to once again make compromises, they are bringing the bar very low for the Taliban, that they say, okay, allow women to work, in, like in some social sector, allow girls to go to school, and on top of that, we are fine with you, we may recognize your government, and we're going to work with you. But my worry is that with all the issues and atrocities that's going on in Afghanistan, there is no way that people would, would tolerate it and people would accept the, gov the government the Taliban are trying to impose on them. So there are regional players that they are not happy with the presence of Taliban and, uh, and definitely they are going to try to find other groups inside Afghanistan to help them so that uh, and, and support them so that they can resist the Taliban. Uh, the international community they hosted the Oslo talk. I think uh, on top of what I'm hearing that there are also um, some other uh, events that they are planning to uh, to host in their countries, uh, invite the Taliban to meet with different groups of women, civil society, media, and others. Uh, but what I'm worrying is that in case of uh, Oslo, what I saw that on the side of Taliban, 15 people were invited very uh, with one voice, with one view about women, with one and quite firm stand. On side of the civil society, uh, in the name of diversity, a very uh, diverse group that they had different stand were invited. And we had only few women. I can tell you that only two women in the Oslo talk took very firm stand against the Taliban, confronted the Taliban um, uh, about the atrocities that they're committing and everything. Other groups, most of them do not did not even confront the Taliban. And that was my fear. I told them that you're bringing 15 Taliban on that side of the table. You bring 15 of us on the side of the table, but I'm afraid majority of the, the people sitting on the side of the table would not even challenge Taliban, would not even speak our language, but they're going to speak the language of Taliban. I think it's very important and we need support of uh, uh, um, support of uh, all of you to work with your government that yes, we have to engage with the Taliban, but Taliban have no credibility. They have been lying for us for the last three years about the peace process. We should not trust them anymore. We should ask them for concessions. They should give us first concession. The concessions that we are asking are not something extraordinary. I mean, any government should allow their girls to go to school. Any government are allowing their, their women to go to, to, to work. So what is so extraordinary that you're asking that you're not uh, granting us? And then on top of that, until we don't get these concessions, we should not let the, our government to allow them to, their, uh, to invite them to their capitals. And on top of that, 
when they are uh, delivering these promises, we should also work on the scenarios and convince either convince the Taliban that uh, uh, that okay, like they have to form an inclusive government and they have to bring back experts and educated people to be able to run the states. But we should also be able to ask ourselves, all of us, the two very hard questions. The first one is who is responsible for what happened to Afghanistan? The failure of the peace, peace process that we invested. We, we negotiated, but end of the day, Taliban won everything and we lost, the Afghan woman, we lost everything. Who's responsible for that? That is question number one. The question number two is that if the Taliban is not willing to open up, if they still continue their, their uh, engagement with the terrorist group, if they still co commit all those crimes against the women, uh, uh, minorities and others, and try you know, intimidating people, torturing people, and taking all those achievements that we have uh, uh, achieved in the last 20 years, what should be our response to that? Should we still say, yes, let's go and sit with the Taliban, talk to the Taliban, break the ice, try to build trust, or should we say that, no, we have to organize ourselves and we have to take a stronger stand against the Taliban? I think these are the hard questions that all of us need to start, uh, uh, ask ourselves. The last one that I want to make is that whatever is happening right now in Afghanistan, that is going to set the model for many Islamic and even Western countries. If we give in to the Taliban, like previous times, and we say, okay, we keep on giving and giving concession and do not demand and do not take any hard stand, that is going to set the model for all extremist groups that, okay, you can go, you can capture a country, you can take the people by, uh, as a hostage, and then the international community will engage with you. They don't have any other choice. So you know, we are inspiring many groups that they go and they begin to capture the countries. That's one thing. If we take a stance and we say that, no, you have to deliver, otherwise we're not going to engage with you. We are setting the standard for everybody that we are principally standing for what we believe in, for the values that we have been working for centuries and we are not to give them in. And that is going to set the precedent for everybody that even if you try to take a state, still you will not be get the recognition of the international community if you do not meet those conditions that they have. The fight between Afghan women and Taliban are the fight of the two ideologies, the extremism, modernism. It's up to us which side we take and which side we make sure to win. It's totally up to us. Uh, thank you very much. And, um, and I'm here. I hope that I have not taken longer time than 10 minutes. Any questions or suggestions, I'm here. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Nargis John. That was a very um, interesting and uh, insightful uh, uh, talk you gave to us. Thank you so much. Uh, like I said, we will come back with questions at the end of the talks. Um, there are some questions in QA and some people are also asking questions in the chat, but we will come to that uh, when all our speakers um, has uh, have spoken. Now I give the floor to um, Najla Rahel. Uh, Najla Rahel is the Vice Chair of Afghan Independent Bar Association. And um, uh, she is uh, right now not in Afghanistan, and uh, she will talk to us about uh, her views um, about Afghan women in Afghanistan and outside Afghanistan. Najla John, floor is yours. Najla John, show me to then get the show going, let's run. Good morning, good morning. I'm glad to be here. 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 تا حد اقل ما صدای خانم های افغان خصوصا ما به نمایندگی از وکلای مدافع افغانستان از خانم هایی که بسیار به وضعیت رقدبار در افغانستان پیرن حضور دارن صحبت می کنم و تشکر می کنم که ما را به نمایندگی از انجمن مستقل وکلای مدافع شما به برنامه دعوت کردین من اجلا رایل هستم سمت ما قبلا گفتن معاون انجمن مستقل وکلای مدافع افغانستان همچنان حوز به ارشد شبکی زنان افغان و خوز به شبکی زنان منطقه و در ضمن وکیل مدافع بودم که عملا از خانم که متضرر بودن در محاکم دفاع می کردم ما فارغ لیسانس پانزه شرایط پانتون و کابل هستم و مستری ما در بخش جزا و جنوب شناسی گرفتیم و فعلا هم مصروف دروس پیش دی در یکی از پانتون هایی که در تیهان است اونجا می باشم و از طریق آنلاین فعلا دروس خود ادامه می تام. دقیقا من میخوایم بسیار یک اشاری کوتا به وضعیت قبل داشته باشم و ای که چرا ما به قبل میخوایم اشاره بکنم دلیل هی است که 
دفعه قبل که طالبا آمدن و پس دوباره اونا سکوت کردن دقیقا ما در سال 81 که زمان حکومت معقد یا زمان کرزه بود ما شامل پنتون شدیم ما 20 سال مثل ما تمام خانمایی که بعد از یک دوری بسیار سیاه و تاریک پنج سال زندانی بودن در خانه بعد از که بسیار تلاش کردیم درس خواندیم کار کردیم حد دقل تانسته بودیم یک رفاه داشته باشیم گرچه من نمیتونم تایید بکنم چون من کسی بودم که وکیل مدافع بودم و با تمام زنای افغان بودم و من میفهمیدم که زنها در افغانستان چی وضعیت دارن حد دقل ما تانسته بودیم در, در چوکات ارگان های عدی و قضایی ساختارها را درست بکنیم حد دقل ما قوانین حمایتی بر خانما داشتیم گرچه تطبیق نمیشد به وجه وجه که ما توقع داشتیم تطبیق نمیشد اما بالاخره داشتیم محاکم من خوشنات در اولایت در بسیاری از اولایت افغانستان که حتی هم اولایت اکثر تصال دولت بود داشتیم و ما حد دقل تانسته بودیم خوشنات ها را از چارچوب خانواده بیرون بکنیم و خانم ها جرعت بکنن تا بیاین خوشنات هایی که متوجه شان است او را به ارگان های عدی و قضایی بیارن و ما تانسته بودیم که انجمن مستقل و کلای مدافع داشته باشیم و ما در ای انجمن حدود 15 صد وکیل مدافع زن داشتیم و تقریبا 5 هزار وکیل مدافع مرد داشتیم که در مجموع 7 هزار تعداد از اینا میشد که بر, بر, بر ما تمام از این ارزش بود مگر متاسفانه اون چیزی که دوستا قبلا گفتن و ما نه هم نمیخوایم تکرار بکنم ما در یک شب فکر کردیم که تمام از این کابوس بود تمام از این خواب بود تمام از این خیال بود و تمام از اون متاسفانه که در 15 آگست بر هم خورد ما چنان ضربی را تجربه کردیم که شاید زخم از او در قلب های ما بسیار مدت های طولانی باقی باشه و ما نکنیم که او را فراموش بکنیم دوستا گفتن که فعلا طالبا با زنها چی میکنه من نمی خواهیم در ایرابطه صحبت بکنم به خاطر تکرار نشوه و از وقت هم جلو گیری شوه و شما هم از رسانه ها هر روز میشنوین که طالبا در مقابل خانم ها چی میکنن منطقه یک موضوعی که طالبا هان چی را که میکنن و هان چی را که میگن متاسفانه آن چی که در عملشان است در زبانشان است اونمو در, در عمل امو کار انجام نمیتن مثلا میگن ما خانمه را میمانیم اجازه میتیم مکتب برن مگر امروز تقریبا پنج یا شش ماز حکومت از اینا شد تا انوز ما شاید نیستیم که مکاتب باز شده باشد تا انوز ما شاید نیستیم که خانمه به وظیفه بتانن رفته باشن بر بر حلاوی از این که هیچ پیشرفت در قسمت خانم ها در زمان طالب یا در زمان می حکومت فیلی وجود نداره برحق ما وضعیت بسیار رقدبار خانم ها را متوجه هستیم که قبلا بسیره جان گفتن ما فقط می خواهیم که وضعیت خانم هایی که حقوقدان بودن، وکیل مدافع بودن، قاضی بودن و سارنوال بودن بسیار خوتا او را بگویم و همچنان بگویم که خانم هایی که قبلا معروض به خشونت بود و من قبلا گفتم وقتی که ما تانسته بودیم که حد دقل قوانین حمایتی را به خاطر مبارزه با خشونت ایجاد بکنیم فرهنگ مرد سالوری که در افغانستان وجود داشت با او مبارزه بکنیم و بتانیم از امی خانم های متضرر دفاع بکنیم امروز اونا در چی وضعیت قرار دارن؟ من میخوایم به این دو مورد به خاطر اشاره بکنم که این کمتر گفته شده امروز تمام و کلای مدافی بعد از این انجمن استقلالش توسط طالب سلب شد استقلال یک نهادی که کاملا غیر سیاسی مستقل و غیر دولتی و یک نهادی که به خاطر تامین عدالت استقلال از اون شرط حتمی است استقلال گرفتن تمام وکلای مدافع ما جوازشان به اعتبار اعلان شد تمام وکلای مدافع زن ما امروز در خانه هستند ضمن از یک وکلای مدافع مرد در خانه است وکلای مدافع زن در خانه هستند تمام زندانی هایی که توسط طالبا در زمانی که اینا داخل کابل شدن داخل افغانستان شدن زندانی ها را رها کردن تمام این زندانی ها کسایی بودند که امی و کلای مدافع ما در, در مقابل از اونا در محاکم به خاطر دفاع از زن هایی که مروض به خشونت بودند استاد شده بودند و دفاع کرده بودند و به اثر دفاع امی و کلای مدافع اونا در حبس رفته بودند و طالبا بدون از اینکه فکر بکنن که اینمی کسایی که اینا رها کردن اینا زنهای خود به قتل رساندن اینا زنهای خود لطو کوب کردن اینا مرتکب جرم جنایت شدن 
و قل حب ده ایچ فرد و ایچ شخص و ایچ دولتی نمیتونه که مطابق اصول حقوقی بخشش کنه بدون در نظر داشته می مورد اینا رو رها کرده حال و کلای مدافع ما خصوصا و کلای مدافع زن شما شاید در جریان هستین در یک ماه اخیر تقریبا بر خانه سی وکیل مدافع زن عمله صورت گرفته ده نفر دوازده نفر مردم و مسئله داخل شدن طالب میگه من نیستم مثل که در قسمت ربودن و زندانی کردن پرو... پروانه و تمنا میگن ما نکرده میکاره در قسمت وکلای مدافع هی نمیگه فهمیدنن میگن ما نیستیم پس اگر طالب نیست کی است و چرا طالب نمیتونه کسی که میکاره میکنه زندانی های رکینا رها کردن چرا نمیتونه کنار دستگیری بکنه دقیقاً که خودشان است در خانه وکلای مدافع روش بردن وکلای مدافع ما با سر صورت پرخون در خانه هایشان مورد لط خوب قرار گرفت و امروز اینا مهر سکوت بر لب دارن چرا مهر سکوت بر لب دارن به خاطر که اینا در افغانستان هستند اینا نمیتونن صدای خدا بلند بکنن اگر صدای خدا بلند بکنن خودشان فامیلشان شاید وضعیتشان مثل پروانه و مثل تمنا شود و انکار بکنن که ما نکردیم این کارا بنان و کلای مدافع زن ضمن از که در خانه ها زندانی هستند کسایی که از حق خانم دفاع میکردند کسایی که خودشان مدافع بودند ضمن از مورد آزار و اذیت و مورد تهدیدهای زندانیایی که رها شدند و همچنان خود دولت طالب قرار دارن اما صدای خود بیرون نمیتونن موضوع دیگه ای است که زنای افغانستان در کل بنابر اینمی اعمال که از طرف طالب اجرا میشه به امراض روانی دچار شده شاید اگر یک تحقیق یا ریسرچ صورت بگیره تقریبا شاید 90 یا 99 درصد زن که در افغانستان است فعلا و به امراض روانی دچار شده از لحاظ اقتصادی اینا کاملا به زمین آمدن متاسفانه برنامه های تخلیه که صورت گرفت در قسمت وکلای مدافع اصلا اینا بیرون نشدن در حال کسایی بودن که وکلای مدافع در خط اول دفاع از حقوق بشر قرار داشتن در حال که سرخط تمام کشورهایی که اعلان میکردن که خواه ما تخلیه میکنیم میپذیریم کسایی را میپذیریم که مدافع حقوق زن باشند پس من نمیفهم که این وکلای مدافع ما که هنوز هم در کابل هستند و هنوز هم بسیار با وضعیت رقد بار زندگی میکنند چرا مستفید نشدن از این برنامه ها؟ فقط ده نفر وکیل مدافع ما از این برنامه مستفید شده و او هم در کمپ حبوزبی بسیار در اقالت بسیار نمیشتی قرار دارند هیچ کشور نیست بر از اینا ویزه بته همیشان در داخل کمپ به امراض روانی دوچار هستند همیشان گریه میکنند و اینا هم کسایی هستند که بدون فامیلای خود بنابر تهدیدهایی که متوجهشان بود فقط خودشان تنها بعضشان با یک طفل و دو طفل خود و بعضشان که مجرد هستند فقط با خود بیرون شدن دوری از فامیل دوری از وطن و همچنان تهدید و مشکلاتی که در کمپ وجود داره و اینا ویزی ندارن کدام کشوری را بپذیر اینا را بپذیره یه از مشکلات است که زنای افغان بسیار با مشکل مواجه کرده مگر آن چی که بر ما بر ما و بر سایر از این زنها قابل سوال است است که چرا با وجود که اینمی وضعیت آمد و تمام جهانی وضعیت هم میبینه که خانما در چی احوال است من این سوال را که میکنم شاید یه زبان بسیار از وکلای مدافع زن است اونا هنوز در افغانستان هستند و اونا هنوز تحت تهدید قرار دارند و اونا هنوز زندانی های خانه هستند اونا پرسان میکنن میگن چرا جهان خاموش است چرا جهان به نمایندگی از ما گپ نمیزنه چنانچه قبلا در رابطه به نشست اسلو صحبت شد در اسلو ما درست است این نشستا خوب است مگر به کدام صورت خوب است به شرط ای خوب است که از این نشستا نتیجه مثبت بیه نه به این معنی که این نشستا صورت بگیره و یک زمینه ای را ما بسیار میترسیم که زمینه ای را مساعد بسازند تا که دولت طالب به رسمیت شناخته شود در حالی که توقع ما من ایسی یک حقوقدان کی بود توقع حقوقدان یک به افغانستان هستند کی بود هنسه قانی از جمله کسایی بود که تحت نظارت بود بندی بود در افغانستان و بعد از او که رها شد در بلک لیست بود در بلک لیست سازمان ملل بود پس چطور تانست انس قانی که به اسلوب بره در کنفرانس بشینه و به صحبت بکنه بنان خواست مایی است توقع مایی است که طالب تا زمانی که آن چی در زبان میگه در حمل تطبیق نکنه به رسمیت نباید شناخته شود و و نشو امو ترسی که ما داریم که این شستا زمینی باشه به خاطر به رسمیت شناختن طالب به خاطر که اگر طالب به رسمیت شناخته شود اینمی کارهایی که قبلا کرده و اینمی تهدیدات کلای خانم ما وجود داره چون ما حملا دیدیم قبل از اینکه در زمانی که پروسیسال که قبلا نرگس جان صحبت کرد 
پروسه سال در افغانستان جریان داشت می گفتن طالب تغییر کرده مگر ما امروز عملا می بینیم که طالب نه تنها که تغییر نکرده از او وضعیت ام وضعیت چون بدتر از مقابل زنای افغان و اینا هیچ گاهی تغییر نخواهم کرده مقابل زنای افغان بنان توقع ما است که اینا باید به رسمیت شناخته نشوند تا زمانی که اینا واقعا در عمل ثابت میکنند چیزایی را که اینا به زبان میارن اگر کدام سوال باشه ما هست تمام رایتان و فعلا مصوبات تخت نمیجه خاطر بمون نجلا جان تشکر یک دنیا تینکی سو مچ نجلا فور لیتنگ اس نو وات واز اکچولی واز هپنینگ لایک یو سی وم پیپل آر ایکسپیرینسینگ دیفیکلت تایمز اولدو پروبابلی دی سیستم واز ان از از نایس از وی تاٹ ایت واز بات پیپل ان دی لاست 20 ایرز کریتد سم تینگ لایک یو سی دس لایرز اسوسییشن um and uh address domestic violence um women could go freely and talk about their experiences of domestic violence and get help and these are the things that these are a very important issues um that uh that should be covered uh, in in all spheres and in all uh kind of walks of life um And, and it's unfortunate to see that these things have gone uh, to zero now. And uh, we we are not sure, like yourself, um, if things can improve or they will improve. This is a question everyone are asking. Uh, we had our first event in September and we just, we didn't know what kind of change will come, what, what will happen, is Taliban going to stick to their words? And six months later, women in Gaza or Afghanistan are still in the same situation. Um, now I give the floor to uh, Zohra Bahman. Uh, Zohra is um, the Afghanistan country director um, uh, uh, for search uh, for common ground. Uh, she is in Kabul right now. She is in Afghanistan. And she will talk uh, to us about uh, her um, experience or uh, what's happening in Afghanistan. Zora, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit um, about the questions you posed, but I just want to um I, i can see a lot of familiar names from the first talk um uh, that you guys held uh, in the audience and um and i just want to say it was a very emotional time i spoke with you uh, the, the the first time round and and i was crying and then i came back to kabul and i'm very glad to be back and and as i had expected i fitted back in like a like a piece of puzzle and and i'm, I'm really happy to be back home and um despite the challenges um and um one of the um, so I'm, i'm going to be talking about a little bit about the the some of the problems um i'm going to talk about three problems two problems um that i think are very important and women are facing it um on a day-to-day -day basis um have been discussed um so i'll focus on the third one the first one um is the loss of uh, safeguards um the previous speaker have spoken about the loss of the safeguards the uh, formal structures that women had access to the police, the court system, and the women's organizations, and, and, and other safeguards um, provided by the, uh, by, the, by, the, uh, by the legal framework that were, that were created um, in the last 20 years and beyond. So they are all gone, and women are back at, a, at the mercy of a sort of traditional dispute resolution mechanisms and so on, and a woman that um, has a um, a woman that, ha that has a problem will have to go back to effectively the perpetrators or those that whose views align with the perpetrators of violence against women to, to make a decision on. Um, so that, that's a big loss. And, and I feel it on a day-to-day -day basis, although I am not a victim of any, any kind of uh, uh, gender-based violence or anything. But every day, um, one of the things that is at the back of my mind is that um, where would I go if something happens to me? Um, and, and many women have have that fear at the back of their mind, and, and we don't even have a lot of a lot of safe space um, for women who are a little bit living even a slightly different lifestyle to to the norm. Um, so, so so that that is incredibly important, and um, in that um, 
gap that's been created, there is more and more importance um, that, that prevention is becoming incredibly important and uh, finding the right allies for women is becoming very important. And, um, and by prevention, I mean, we need to continue to educate communities on eradicating some of the harmful cultural behaviors and, and, and um, practices um, so that we, um, in, so that the, the crime do not take place rather than um, for them to take place and then us um, having to deal with the lack of the safeguards. Uh, the second issue is the shrinking of freedoms. Everybody is talking about it and on a daily basis, we're hearing a lot about um, how uh, ordinary Afghan women's freedom of movement and, and so on is being um, curtailed. Um, on one hand, we're hearing about the fact that Afghanistan has become safe now. It is, it is safe, um, safe in a sense that you can just um, technically travel the country and, um, and, and, and go and see different places because um, roadside bombs, uh, complex, complex attacks and, um, and fight, fighting between the men from the Taliban side and the men from the government side of stuff. But, but then our freedoms are restricted. Um, uh, we cannot go anywhere um, technically um, without a close male relative. Uh, um, as, as we cannot go anywhere beyond 47 miles um, for, uh, without a close male relative. Uh, we have uh, there are a lot of um, women being stopped on the streets and questioned um, about the men they're walking with or being driven by and uh, as they enter premises, so offices and hotels and shops and so on. And the, the way we dress is um, is, is, is being dictated to us. Um, and it, it is following a very typical dictatorial scenario where um, to begin with these, these new rules are being conveyed as, as, um, as prescriptive, as, as advisory, and as non-prescriptive non -prescriptive advice. So the Taliban are claiming that, that they're merely suggesting this to, to people, that they're trying to set a tone to the, to the society. But slowly their, their uh, foot soldiers are, are using, um, using force to implement these so-called advisory rules around women and, and, and having uh, to be accompanied by male relative and so on. And, and these, these are important things. And I mean, we're planning um, an office retreat and, um, and we really have to think hard about it because I'm the only woman working in my office and whether I can join or whether I should join online. And we're thinking about going and visiting some uh, provinces and even to visit a relative, um, unless that relative is accompanying you, you cannot, and they're very closely related to you, you cannot really do much. And these things slowly, um, even if you have another, a different job like I do and, and a different life and different priorities, and, and perhaps this is not the battle I want to fight, it becomes my battle to fight every day and, um, and, and, and many other women's as well. Um, how are we women um, fighting? Um, we're fighting in, on the streets. Um, and I think that's incredibly important as uh, Basira John and others uh, have mentioned. It's important for women to get out. It's, women, it's important for women to continuously be visible in the public sphere. It's important for women to not all be um, the same and liked and um, and on the same page and, and 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 sometimes I disagree with what these women are asking for but every single time I walk past them on the street and it, it gives um, warmth to my heart and I, I feel really great that these women are out there doing things um, and uh, and and then there are many um, uh, there are things we need to think about we need to think about how can we how can we strengthen um, women's movement, the type or the sector of women's movement that gets out on the street? How can we bring some persistence, uh, some strong um, focused messaging? How can we make sure that um, with, the, with, with most experienced women's rights activists that were on the streets around issues like uh, we had uh, when the government tried to stop the women's refuges, these were, we were on the streets many, many years ago, and we were on the streets around um, um, issues like women, Shia women's personal status laws. Uh, we were on the street on very sensitive issues. 
but most of those leaders from my generation have left the country and they had to leave the country. So there's a new generation of young leaders coming in um, and they're the ones that are leading these uh, protests. And how do we make sure an intergenerational um, uh, or, or a how can we make sure that there's some sort of a cohesion and some sort of learning there as well? Because this is a continuation of Afghan women's movement and it's important that, that we see it as that. And we don't let, we don't, and that we do not let it um, be used as an opportunity to uh, weaponize women's rights and, 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 cap, and categorization of, um, of women as the, these are the women that are doing it the right way and these are the women that are doing it the wrong way. Um, and it's, so we have to really work, work on it and we need to channel um, we need to channel resources well as well. I, um, our organization, for example, does one, one of the things we do is to link women from Afghanistan who are at the forefront of these street marches and so on. And we want to link them with women who are doing the same in Syria, doing the same in um, Somalia and in Sudan and in, in, in Kazakhstan and, and many, many other countries and, and spaces. And, and, and we want to make sure that these women learn to, to mobilize the right way and the safe way. And we want to make sure that they, don't, that they do whatever decision they make, um, uh, that, that, that they are supported, that their mental health is, um, is looked after, that if they have to go in hiding, they have a safe place to, to be in hiding. If they want to take some time off, uh, to rest and recuperate, and they can do that as well. So there's a good good role that international organizations can play, but there's a lot of courage that's needed for organizations to choose to play that role. And um, the other thing we, uh, women are doing is that they're actively fighting um, in spaces, using the spaces that is created by the within the system. I was in Afghanistan last time the Taliban were here, and um, Taliban have changed uh, in my experience. Um, maybe in many ways they haven't, but they have changed in a sense that more workspaces are open for Afghan women. Uh, more spaces uh, like I could not imagine 20 years ago for women. I'm, I'm living in Afghanistan on my own. I am, I've, last week I gathered 140 young men and women in the same a room with the uh, with Taliban mid to high ranking officials and these women and men were freely speaking with the Taliban and the things that they were bringing up were social justice, inclusive government and so on. Maybe these are the uh, the kind of Taliban that uh, Minister Nahan um, mentioned as the as the moderate moderates. So the moderates are not totally sidelined in the Taliban government, and we need to seek them out, and we need to build ally. Uh, we need to build relationships with them because that is this kind of activism augments the kind of activism that we show on the streets. We cannot go with our strategy. Strategy should not be focused on one type of action. Um, the um, uh, the, sorry, I actually missed one of the issues that I wanted to talk about, but I, I will come back to it in, in a second. Um, the other thing that uh, women are fighting through is exactly this kind of meetings. And, and increasingly, I'm seeing um, networks being built and you, internet and, and, and so on is being used by women in Afghanistan, women who have now left, um, sort of evacuated women, women in diaspora. So we're all sort of linking up. We There's a lot of sort of talking and, and there's a lot of sort of trying to figure out who is um, on, on, in, in what, on what part of the feminism or women's rights or whatever spectrum. And then we're trying to seek each other out. But, but this networking, the sisterhood and the kind of names that I continuously see in different meetings, professional meetings, activist meetings, meetings that happen, you know, bang in the middle of the, you know, work day with donors and then it, the, the kind of meetings that happen in the evening when you know that somebody is really passionate about women and human rights and so on. And then I can see that and it's building within Afghanistan, it's building in the region and it's building between the women in Afghanistan and, and the Western countries as well. And I really like that. I wanted to go back to the problems and I just want to mention one problem and it's important. The Taliban are under sanctions. Um, and there is a reason why they're under sanctions. And I don't want to discuss that because we all know that and, and previous speakers have talked about them. 
However, we need to know that um, the way sanctions are impacting Afghanistan is, is catastrophic. Um, number one, the civil service has collapsed. One million people were employed by the civil service in Afghanistan. They have not been paid um, for a long time now, even before the collapse of the, uh, of the, of the Republic. Um, of the one million people, each person on average um, sustained the life of another seven people. So that's eight million people out who haven't been paid because uh, we have not had, um, we have, the, the Afghanistan's money has not trickled, by, uh, tri trickled into the country. Now, th what does this mean in practice? In, um, in the organization that I work for, we advertised for a uh, person to come in and, and, and basically do some hygiene and health messaging on COVID prevention, which is basically, we, we were looking for a young person, maybe a medical student or something, so he, they can just go to refugee camps and teach people how to wash their hands, how to keep distance and how to do uh, you know, um, home isolation and so on. We received about 80 applications. And amongst this appli these applications were the head of the top COVID, COVID hospital in Afghanistan, the person in charge of the ICU in that hospital, the person in charge of public awareness in that hospital, the head of the lab in that hospital. We had six, seven people from Kabul's top hospital. When I actually called um, two, three of them up and I said, hey, you, you are the, the country's top doctor treating COVID patients. Why do you want to come and be a, basically a, a public awareness person? And he said, because he hasn't been paid. So the structure is crumbling. The health structure is crumbling. The education is crumbling. And we cannot ignore that. And, and it's, it's, you know, when you, my, my aunt is, um, is an educated woman. She, my, my aunt, my mother's sister, so, so incredibly close to me. And she's now, she is, she's, a, she's a woman who has worked, uh, she was very close to retirement and she hasn't been fired by the Taliban and she works for the Ministry of Justice. However, she hasn't been paid for six months. She lost her husband to COVID. And last week she called me, she told me that she has joined the WFP food distribution program. And these are not these are the direct impact of the, of, of, the, of the sanctions, and we cannot ignore that. We cannot create parallels. I mean, there's a lot of people claiming that let's just get UNICEF to pay all the teachers. Let's get WHO to do all the healthcare. An organization, a UN institution, when, which in itself is an incredibly corrupt <laughs> type of organization who takes about 60, 70% of the money that it gets as overheads, we cannot expect that kind of institution to run a crumbling country, a country's crumbling health and education system. We have to think of long-term solutions, not create alternatives, not endanger more people's health and well-being. Um, so, so in, it's really important to remember that. And what do people want um, from the West? I, I, I don't think people want anything from the West. But people are constantly with the West and the East and the North and the South and women and men are thinking, what can we do with the Taliban? Um, and there are several things we can do. We can compete with them, but we have to think about how can we compete with them? We're a highly militarized country. Everybody is armed to the tooth. Um, can we compete with the Taliban? They're more armed than us. Do we want another civil war? So competition is an, an alternative some people are pushing. Um, the second one is accommodation. How much can we accommodate the Taliban? How much can we realistically accommodate Taliban without endangering, endangering our, um, uh, how can we endanger our well-being and, 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 and our, our livelihood um, in, in accommodating the Taliban? Uh, and are they willing to accommodate us? The other one is avoidance. How can we avoid it, the Taliban and the Taliban issues? Can we all leave the country? That's an avoidance strategy. Can we stay in the country and create par parallel underground structures? Maybe for some systems, for some things, but not for everything. Maybe we can teach girls up to grade 12, but how are we going to teach them medicine? So we cannot avoid um, engaging with the Taliban. We can compromise, um, but how much are they going to compromise? What are we willing to compromise? Um, another alternative would be to collaborate. And, and I think, 
um, each of these um, strategies are valid and each of these needs to be pursued uh, simultaneously. Um, but the point I'm trying to make with these um, discussing these strategies is that that this is not time to this is not the time for us as women to um, to further disengage as a movement as educated women, um, Afghan women, based on what kind of strategy do we choose on 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 dealing with the Taliban? I per personally believe that collaboration, where collaboration is possible, is important. Avoidance, when avoidance is possible, is important. And competing in, 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 in fighting on the streets is important. But it's also important for these strategies to work in a kind of a, um, a strategic alliance with each other. Um, and, 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 and for them to not be used for us to become more disintegrated. Um, I, I can, of course, you can, you can see that I can talk for 10 hours about this and I do every day. So I'll just, um, I'll just stop here. Thank you very much. And I see there's some questions. So I let Kuruajan um, decide how we deal with that. Thanks. Thank you so much, Zura John. That was great. Uh, yes, like I said, uh, we will take the questions. We put them in um, different areas and we will take them at the end and then I will give a chance one by one to explain maybe not all the questions, but some um, some uh, important questions. Um, Zora concluded herself very well, but I just wanted to highlight um, a few things um, that she said. She said the challenges were the lack of safe space prevention and finding allies for um, women. Um, and then she also um, asks for some recommendations, like uh, some questions she asked, like how can we strengthen and uh, be persistent on the work of activism we do, uh, uh, even uh, demonstrating on the streets, how can we come together and make it more persistent and make it more strategic um, so people can hear what exactly we are saying, because at the moment uh, there are demonstrations, but they are um, um, all over the place, um, and the rule of international NGOs, how they can help in uh, making, uh, strengthening and helping women and supporting women to um, continue with their activism inside Afghanistan. Um, and there was one thing that uh, kind of uh, was interesting for me, that was how women um, use different spaces to fight and be active, like how activists women in Afghanistan are fighting for their rights and what they believe in. And that's that's very important and it's true. They are fighting for their rights and um, they are using different spaces. And that's something important um, uh, to, to know. But also for us as uh, Afghan women diaspora, Afghan women living abroad, um, this is a great message to, uh, to kind of get together and maybe start supporting and helping. Uh, how can we do this? Uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, now I gave the floor to um, our next speakers, uh, Homa Ahmadi. Uh, Oma Ahmadi um, is the former member of uh, parliament in Afghanistan and uh, currently she is in Greece. Um, so the floor is yours, uh, Homa John. Um, I think she uh, probably needs uh, interpretation. I just wanted to say before as well that there, there is interpretation. So if you go on interpretation and uh, click on English, then you can... Um, you can listen to uh, what she says in English. Befarmoyen Oma Jan, khosh amadin. Salam arzadab darum khidmat shuma wa tamam azidin majlis. Oma Ahmadi astam namaindi mardum sharif logar dar parman Afghanistan wa daur sehume wa kalat mas. ما درشته درست خانده ایم یک رشته و فوق علوم سیاسی و یک رشته از رشته ساینس فارغ هستم فیلا در ایداره و تجارت ماستری می کردم که تاربا داخل کابل شدن و سال سیزه افتاد یک به این طرف کار کردیم در مستات ملی و بین المللی و زیادتر امرای خانما در تماس بودیم در دو سی دور وکالت، پیش از وکالت، در باره حقوق زنان، در باره 
دخترای که از مکتب باز مانده بودن تمامشان توانستیم که آموزش سره بتویم که در ولایت لوگر تقریبا ده هزار شاگرد ما در ورسولی های مختلف در پنج ورسولی توانستیم که آموزش سره بتویم از طرف مسیح کوار و معلمین تدریس کردیم زیادتر توانستیم که با خانما و با اخشار مختلف جامعه در تماس باشیم و در پنج جرگه اشتراک داشتیم از جرگه قانون اساسی جرگه ننوی جرگه سلف در تمام جرگه ها اشتراک داشتیم و ما عضو شورای سلف هم در افغانستان بوده ایم فعلا ما در یونان هستیم کوشش کردیم که یک جمع وکیل سایبا که جمع 25 نفر از خانه ما در یونان حضور داریم یک شبکی بسازیم که بتانیم صدای ملت افغانستان باشیم و نمایندگی از او قشره که در سرکا مزایره میکنند در اویشان تیزاب پاشت میشه و هیچ کس صدایشان نمیشنوه نمایندگی بکنیم و بتانیم که بعد از پانزی اگست که تمام نظام ما، بیرق ما، هویت ما، تمام چیز ما از بین رفت ما بتانیم که با تمام ملت افغانستان در هر گوشه که دنیا هستن ما امرایشان در تماس باشیم این شبکه ما از زنان که در سنا مجلس است و در پارلمان افغانستان حضور داشتن و زنان که از دور 15 و 16 بودن ایجاد شده و ما فعلا سر اساس نامه شبکه کار میکنیم در یونان که ما بتانیم ثبت و راج سر بکنیم و عدف از این شبکه ما ای است که روی هم دیگر فضیری داشته باشیم فرامسازی دیالوگ هایی که مثل که در اسلو یا ما همه ما در اروپا هستیم هیچ یک ما نماینده در این نشست نبودیم و دیالوگ هایی که میشه به سطح میلی و بین المللی چون وضعیت زنازیات خراب است در افغانستان و تمام کسایی که کدرای وطن ما بودن اول خو بیرون شدن اگر در افغانستان هستن مثل بندی خانگی هستن هیچ کدامشان نیست که بتانن بیرون شوند یا جدت بیرون شدن بکنند ما به او خاطر شبکه را ساختیم انشاءالله که بتانیم و می عدف خود نایلائیم و عدف ما از این شبکه دادهایی برای تامین عدالت و نقش زنان در عرصه های مختلف و از بین بردن تبریز جنسیتی است که ما هم در پارلمان هم که بودیم همی حالت بود در افغانستان که زن هیچ کس نمیماند که کار بخونه و حال خوک طالبا آمده در افغانستان اصلا زنا را نمیمانند که از خانه بیرون شوند مثل از که میگه که هر زن باید یک معرم داشته باشه دولت که زنای افغان قدر بیچاره هستند که یا بیوه هستند یا بچه ندارند امروز ما جلسه داشتیم که یکی از وزیر صاحبای سابق قبضوی صاحب بود در جمع جلسه ما و اونا عشقشان ریخ گفت که منی شوار دارم و نی بچی دارم که امروی ما اگر در کابل می بودم بیرون می رفت یا مرم نامه شد یعنی شما فکر کنید که مثل ما هزاران زن از در افغانستان که نمی وضعیت و نمی حالت داره اونا چی کار بکنن و ما برای جلب امایت جامعه جهانی برای آوردن سال پایدار و بهبود اوزای کنونی کشور ما که مشارکت سیاسی زنان و ایجاد یک دولت همه شمول هم میخواییم از جامعه جهانی و برای تلاش در جهت تعلیم و تحصیل بر نسل جوان ما که جامعه ما نسل جوان شکر خدا زیاد داریم و تمام جوانای ما تحصیل کرده هستند و اونا رو نباید ما در گوشی خانه هایشان بندی بسازیم و از امی دولت مردا باید خواهش کنیم که جوانای ما که به سوی ماستری و دکترا درس خواندن تحصیل کردن گام به گام با برادرای خود کار کردن زحمت کشیدن نباید بندی خانگی شون و نباید قید شون نباید صدایشان خاموش شون و ایجاد و فرام نمودن سهولت های کاری برای تلاش کنیم که صدای زنا بلند باشد سهولت برقار شد 
و بر بلند بردن وضعیت اقتصادی زنها باید کار بکنیم ایجاد گروپ های دادخواهی برای تحقق اهداف شبکه در کشورهای مختلف ما در کشور که باشیم باید یک گروپ های دادخواهی داشته باشیم مثل که همون خوهرهای ما که در افغانستان هستند دادخواهی میکنند و میتونند که از صدای مردم افغانستان رو بلند کنند که در این هواخر طالبا خوهرهای ما رو میبرند و بندی میکنند و زجر میتونند و زیاد وضعیتشان خراب میسازند که ما من حیث نماینده های مردم افغانستان از این وضعیت زنان زیاد زیاد ناراض هستیم و خواهش ما از دولت مردم ای است که نباید وضعیت زنان در افغانستان قدر بد است قدر خراب است که بعد از 15 اگست ما و کلایی که نماینده مردم افغانستان بودیم وقتی که طالبان در کابل داخل شدند همه ما از خانه ها فرار شدیم و همه سیاسیون افغانستان بادیگاردا و محافظین ما خل سلا شد تمام موترا و چیزی که داشتیم برده شد توسط طالبا و خود ما ماجر شدیم آواره شدیم در 26 اگست ما تانستیم که در میدان اوائی بریم که انفجار شد جمع وکیل صاحب آمی 20 نفر بودیم در میدان اوائی که انفجار شد در میدان و تمام زخمی ها و شهدایی که وطن های ما در میدان اوائی شهید شدن زخمی شدن همشان هم ما به چشم سر خود دیدم و اولادای ما بهان اندازه ترسیده بودن و شوق دیده بودن که دخترک خورد ما تا فیل هم هر شب صدا میکنه و اونمو وضعیت و حالت در بیادش میه و 20 سپتمبر ما تانستیم که از کابل بیرون شویم به کمک مینالز به کمک تانیا جان و دوستای خارجی ما که 20 نفر از وکیل سایبا را با جمع فامیلایشان از کابل به ایرات، از ایرات به ایران، از ایران به جورجیا و از جورجیا به یونان آوردن که مدت پنج ما میشه ما در یونان هستیم و در یونان هم می تصمیم گرفتیم که ما یک شبکه بسازیم که ما بتانیم اعضای مرسین شبکه که 25 نفر از وکیل سایبا هست بتانیم که تصمیم های که در باری افغانستان گرفته میشه نظر خدا بتانیم مشورهای داشته باشیم و بتانیم که جلب امایت های جامعی بین المللی را و خاطر خدمات بشر دوستانه و طور مستقیم و جامعه خود بخوایم و داشته باشیم آما جان تشکر یک دنیا از از ای که آمدن و امرای ما گپ زدن بسیار زیاد تشکر تنکیو تنکیو سو مچ دیر هما جان Um, uh, yes, it's, it's important to know that uh, they are establishing a network of um, women parliamentarians, I think, in, in Greece, and um, they're working on it right now. And one, it, once it's on, um, we will hear about it, they probably will launch it. Um, and uh, it's, it's important to have this sort of network. Um, like Omajan said, they want to work on joint uh, dialogues for future meetings. Um, so they want to represent uh, themselves and select the women they, who should go to these kind of meetings uh, themselves. Uh, now I give the floor to uh, Marcel. Emal, uh, she's one of our uh, European Network of Migrant Women's uh, members, and she's also uh, a working in Afghan Women Organization in Sweden. Um, and she will talk uh, to us from a young woman's perspective. Thank you, Marcel John. The floor is yours. Thank you, Farah John, <clears throat> to have my voice. I'm, I'm very sorry about my voice, I'm, I'm, I'm sick, so uh, yeah, sorry for that. Uh, yeah, incredible speakers, uh, you haven't uh, left anything for me to, to, to talk about. But I just want to say that um, even though, though many of us in diaspora never lived in Afghanistan, and never had the opportunity to visit uh, our beloved country. The 15th of August was the, the day that uh, all of us in diaspora were the, um, in shock. We were in shock and we uh, once again uh, got through the trauma our parents got through. 
uh, we're living into generational uh, trauma right now uh, of escaping a war and 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 uh, once again the trauma hit us and the uh, millions of Afghans uh, when the history repeats itself. Now it's uh, mostly near six months uh, have passed and we have we have been witnessing all kind of expected and unexpected actions from Taliban. Where world have silent, silently uh, keep watching it, uh, keep watching how uh, you see uh, it has been 132 days since women and girls have been banned from school, from educational institutions uh, and from work. Uh, we see the escalation of humanitarian crisis and uh, how strongly and badly uh, both the humanitarian uh, crisis and the, the Taliban regime hit strongly and badly women and, uh, and girls. Uh, we, we see also increasing of numbers of child marriage and uh, how uh, families are forced to, to sell their daughters uh, for or their child uh, to make other siblings survive. We see our brave activists who day and night fights for their basic human rights get arrested, tortured and in silence. And of course, uh, I don't want to go in the details. Uh, we have uh, heard everything about, uh, about what's happening in Afghanistan with women and girls from our previous speakers. Uh, I think no one have missed what ha have happened to and what's happening right now. I want to say that, of course, we have a millions of girls and women in Afghanistan inside of country who seeks uh, and seeking back their basic human rights, the restriction they, they, they face and uh, living uh, under those uh, restrictions is unbelievable for us in diaspora. But I want you to know that uh, diaspora are in pain with you. Uh, even though we are not there, we are doing our best uh, to, to, to show the world what's happening and, and raise the voices uh, that have been silent. And uh, <laughs> it's maybe very banal and cliche phrase I will say, uh, when it comes to uh, situation in Afghanistan, I just want to say we stand by you and with you. It's very uh, important for, for, for women who, who fight right now in Afghanistan to know about it. Once again, we, we see how West betray, betrays the Afghan women and girls. Um, and uh, I want everyone who right now listening to, to me and to, to speakers, uh, to say that remember those women and girls who have been evacuated or those who are still in hiding or haven't managed to, to get out from the country and wants to go uh, out from the country. They're not seeking uh, only a safe place for survival. They are also um, want to, to, to achieve the liberty that we in diaspora, example, for example, have been able to, to joy of. I want to say how, how uh, Swedish diaspora of Afghans uh, had what reaction we had when it comes to, to, to Norway and, and uh, the initiative that has been uh, taken by, by, by Norway. Uh, it, it felt us uh, as a diaspora, as a kick in the face uh, of Afghan women, not because uh, they wanted us to start to speak to, to, to Taliban, but uh, because West wo Western world and world uh, once again opened the doors to, to Taliban without being conditional in their steps forward. Uh, and as John said uh, in, in her uh, speech that uh, we are again uh, being fooled by them. The international community have together come to a solution that talks clearly about the women values in peace talks and bringing peace and keeping peace in the countries uh, in special uh, in a war and post-war countries. Uh, I think it's very important for, for 
international community to to do not um, forget their own uh, resolutions uh, they have been uh, both forcing and not forcing countries to to um, uh, amplify and I just want as a diaspora as a person in diaspora say that two women and girls who managed to get out from Afghanistan you're starting a new chapter uh, and being a, uh, being a migrant or being a, a refugee is not an easy life you have a new country you have a new language to learn you have a new social structures uh, that can make uh, ex house uh, a lot of people i have been there and a lot of us have been there and have been through that this time uh, i want just to say i don't want to go uh, into very details we have a professional uh, politicians and and lawmakers here in in our speech uh, in speakers uh, i want just to say that it's in it, this is a time to remember why you have uh, have been evacuated why you have been a target uh, for taliban i want you to remember and to to not lose true self uh, of your of you and continue your fight continue your fight from another side uh, we are with you and I, we will always be uh, a part of 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 your journey if if you want it uh, if you want us to be and i want to thank one and each of you uh, who have been fighting and still fight for women and girls rights in your own way not everyone can get out to, to the streets and scream. Uh, Zara John said an incredible thing about how we need to manage to, to, to have a structure and to be together. Uh, we need a united Afghan woman uh, to pass our, our uh, message to, to West World and to Taliban. Uh, yes, uh, and as I said, uh, it has it have been exhausted uh, time for even uh, us in diaspora. Uh, yeah, this is my message, and I just want to say that we all need to uh, remember that there is no peace without women and long life, liberty, and freedom. We will make it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Marcel John. Thank you very much uh, for your input as a young um, woman being brought up in diaspora and being very actively involved in demonstrations and, and with our network as well. Thank you. Um, now I'm going to ask the questions that are posed in the Q&A. And then um, I will ask um, anyone who wants to come and volunteer and answer the questions if that's um, that's the way we will work it because probably not everyone uh, will have to answer the same question. Um, so the, the, the first question is, uh, what can we do for the widows of all ages, poorest of poor? Uh, so what, uh, what can be done for widows in Afghanistan? And uh, if, I, if I take this question first, if someone can answer it, then I will I'll ask the next question. So what can we do for widows? Uh, who would like to answer this? Zora John, Basira John, any of you? I don't mind answering this um, purely yeah. because um, we, our organization and um, and, it, and, and obviously the, the, the work I've done in Afghanistan has touched on humanitarian um, aid and widows are, um, of course, widows are everywhere in Afghanistan 20, um, plus years of this war and then another 20 years before we've got um, widows of all ages uh, and then uh, their situation um, having nobody to bring um, bring them an, an income and then having man, many of them having lost um, their own um, their own jobs and employment opportunities and so on we need to uh, we need to make sure that we bring in some changes at the advocacy level um, it's important that we, ask different donor agencies in the countries to, uh, to define humanitarian aid 
which is now allowed in Afghanistan, uh, which is under sanctions effectively, to include uh, livelihood, livelihoods projects and support in uh, income generation and employment generation support. Because right now, uh, these female headed households um, headed by widows are actually suffering the most from the narrow definition of humanitarian aid, which is just giving out of food and winterization kits and hygiene kits and, and some basic healthcare. So we need to expand that so that these women can at least be retrained um, and, and uh, given capacity and absorbed into workforce where there is an opening for them, like in manufacturing and so on. I will give you an, an example. There is a host, uh, sorry, there's a factory that uh, worked with 400, 4,000 women um, up until early August this year um, in a USAID funded project. A lot of these women were widows. And what they, they used to do was to get raw products, uh, learn a trade, learn a traditional uh, art, uh, women's art in Afghanistan and, and do these, uh, wave this, these carpets. Um, and it was a US government funded project. After the 15th of August, this project shut down uh, because of sanctions and there was a fear that some of this money might possibly go to the Taliban through taxes and so on. So, so these women from employed female headed households moved overnight to women who could not feed themselves and their, cho uh, their children. So, um, so, so we need to stop that. So now that money has, some of that money has transformed into some urgent food care, but you can imagine the psychological impact on, on women of that. And then don't underestimate small projects um, as well. So on advocacy side, you can, you can call for wider definition of, definition of humanitarian aid, but what can you do? Don't underestimate your own power. Um, we, uh, our organization distributed um, uh, menstrual kits to women, gave them hygiene education, gave them um, uh, some, some food aid and so on. It only cost us $20 uh, per person. We don't take individual donations right now, but other smaller organizations that are partnered with us, um, they do, and they have mechanisms in place. So you can support widows, but please, whatever you do, make sure that that the dignity of that person is, 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 is vital because it's not only about surviving until your next meal. And there are widows associations. Um, there are widows, um, that the, the, one of the ministries, um, martyrs and disabled and so on, um, actually registered war widows. Um, but here as well, we have got an issue because everybody wants things for their own widows. There's a, there is a there is a um, hierarchy. So in the previous government, only the widows of the uh, people killed by the Taliban were accepted in that, that kind of mechanism. Whereas on the other side, on the Taliban side, there were lots of widow widows. And then now what, hap what is happening is a lot of aid is going, not a lot of aid, but some, the aid that is there goes to that kind of widows. And then the other widows are there um, sort of um, uh, still suffering. So we have to think about the, the fact that, um, that what these women are suffering from is obviously patriarchy that prevents them from having their own livelihoods and having you know, their own existence despite the fact that their husband is living or dead or whatever. Um, and also now they're being punished for who their husbands were now dead were as well. So we need to think about all of these and, and make sure that um, that we don't value judge. I, I feel really bad when, when somebody comes and says, that, but the international aid by the UN is now going to these Taliban women. And then you think, for goodness sake, these Taliban women are the widows of people who were fighting. And, and these women are, have separate identities and needs and, 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 and they're suffering as well. So, so let's make sure that we change the, the narrative uh, from these women being a, an auxiliary, a part of their dead husbands only. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Zora Jan. I just want to say because of time, uh, let's keep the answers short and sweet. <laughs> so, um, and uh, up to the point. Um, the next question, if someone else wants to comment on the widows, they're very welcome. Otherwise, I will ask the, uh, the next question. For, for Harjan, may I, may I intervene? Of course, who is this, sorry? 
Nargis. Uh, yes, Nargis John, come. Please. Do. I will keep it. Uh, uh, I totally agree with all the points that uh, uh, Zohra John have made, and I just wanted to um, let you know that the organization that I founded, Equality for Peace and Democracy, is uh, working in twenty provinces with provincial with provincial women networks. Uh, these networks are providing support to their communities, and one of the things that uh, we have been doing in the last six months is that. They have been um, monitoring their communities and they have been reporting about the people that they need, uh, basic needs of life, whether they are on the Taliban side or in the government side, it doesn't matter now. Everything is under control of Taliban now. So, um, and then they, they made the list everything and they are providing support for uh, their women in the communities. So if, um, and as Orajan said, sometimes these small donations make a huge difference, especially for the people that they need it and if they need the help gets to them at the right time. So if there's anybody interested, and especially in those areas that uh, uh, the Rajon organization and the partners are not there, we can also help uh, uh, to get to, re to reach to those upper areas with our organization. Thank you. Uh, great, thank you, Nergis John, for your input. Also, uh, now I will ask uh, the second question. Um, it says, uh, "How is education working now, and will women, children be able to accept accept external help like using like technologies and and other uh, help that can go to them?" Um, so um, maybe Basile John wants to comment on this, uh, Zura John or anyone else who has experience are very welcome to comment on this. How the education, uh, how can girl benefit, women and girls can benefit from external help uh, for uh, education purposes or educational purposes? My دوستو <laughs> بعدن از طریق آنلاین یا دوستایی که در خارج از کشور هستند و از ما چه پروژیکتور اینا که ما قبلا هم برنامه هایی با مذاکراتی که قبلا با دوها بود مستقیم با خانم ها جلسات یا آنلاین برنامه هایی داشتیم برای فعلا هم با وجودی که کار مدت زیاد میشه تحتیل شده اما برنامه های همکارای ما دارم و داریم سر از کار میکنیم که ما عدقل از طریق همین برنامه های آنلاین بتانیم خانم ها را آنچه که عدق قبلا داشتیم اونا را ایدوه بدیم اگر دوستا خواسته باشم میتونم از این طریق از طریق محسسی که ما داریم همکاری کنیم تشکر تشکر بسیار زیاد intervene here please i'll be very very quick um, yes of course come <laughs> yes i just wanted to okay come please okay. yes we're going to speak uh, on on education it's really important to um highlight that um that we need to focus on the on on making sure that the girls um can use the opportunities that that are there right now one thing i've noticed is that despite the fact that the um, university, private universities are open for girls and girls are attending. Um, the, the number of girls um, in each class have dropped. Um, I provide, um, I work in a scholarship program and I spoke with the, with the girl that, that I support. And she said that there were 26 girls and um, 30 something boys in her class um, in July, but now there's only five girls. And it's not that these girls were stopped by the Taliban, and it's not that um, there's anything that they fear, but as the eco economic hardship hits, it's girls' education that, um, that loses out the most. And that is something we can do something about. Um, in the scholarship that I'm, I'm working on, um, it only costs about uh, $1,000, 
to give the highest possible private education to a girl to become a midwife or a doctor per year. And this includes travel, all stationary, uh, you know, internet access, um, a phone um, for the girl to connect, um, because a lot of things happen on WhatsApp and, and, and exchanges, money to uh, for tuition and, and things like that. So consider um, paying for somebody's education. And there are lots of um, organizations that are organizing that. Uh, I am organizing that. Um, there's another organization in the UK that I can link you guys up to that is organizing that. Um, but I would really like to see come March um, for at least this specific girl, she goes to a private university to become a dentist. I would really like to, I've taken responsibility to include another five girls in the next years, next academic years that starts in March in that class. Sorry, Zuraj, and these classes are online or they have to go oh, physically to university? No, they, it, it's as regular university classes. And also another thing is when the schools are closed for um, in most provinces, not all, from grade seven to 12. And girls are automatically up grade up, you know, they've, they've been take, put a class up for, for March starts. Um, one thing you can do there is to see if you can um, if you can support projects, there's Learn Afghanistan, for example, who, who would help girls who missed out on a three months school before the winter holidays to catch up because some of these girls are in grade 12 and 11 and they're going to be taking university entrance exams. Pay for university entrance prep classes, which are, which are, now, which are taking place and girls can attend them so that they can at least once the once the international community and the activists uh, manage to reopen the girls' school and the girls can go to then uh, graduate um, and, and they compete with boys who've had regular education, then they, have, they, are, they are on an equal, equal basis. So, so try and do things that can change things for good in practical terms. So, sorry, I just want to ask one question, which is really confusing for myself and probably other others listening to this or re-listening to the news. Is actually the university, some of the universities are open for girls. Can they, are they going to universities? Yes, they are going to universities. So the scholarship program that I, for example, run and all my, uh, all my family and friends are going to university, private universities. So university where you have to pay fees. Public universities, most of them are closed for both boys and girls. Uh, mm -hmm. Some are open only for boys. Uh, okay. We are trying to get the, the universities to open for everybody, the public universities, the, the ones where you, where you can go without paying fees. But right now, the thing that is open is private universities. And, and uh, the girl, primary, sorry, the school education is obviously separate. English classes, any, you know, like right now, I, I, I um, some of my relatives are attending like, um, uh, like physics and math and, you know, science catch up mm -hmm. classes. Those, those are happening, but then nobody can afford, afford that. Mm -hmm. um, and there are some re regulations sort of how you have to dress and so on, but I've checked things like, can girls access labs? Um, can they access transportation? Can they access, can, you know, things like that. They can, they can do that in the top, in the top private universities, at least, that I've talked to. Okay, thank you. And uh, I also wanted to go back uh, to Basile's uh, comments um, uh, that online classes for women, um, I would be very grateful if uh, uh, Basile John can write the name of the organization here. And if anyone wants to reach out to uh, Basile, and uh, wants to help, they are very welcome to do so. Um, the, the next question, um, and I think the final question I'm going to ask is, um, is it possible for NGOs to help? And if so, who are the groups that could participate from their network to help? Yes, Nergis John, please. For her, John, I have a question. Um, yes. When we uh, do they are they talking about international NGOs or local NGOs? Um, I need to look at the question again. Um, because uh, to give you brief information, international uh, NGOs are um, working. I don't think any of them have uh, shut down their uh, uh, presence in Afghanistan. For example, Zohra Jan Bahman right now, she's the 
she's working for international NGO working in Afghanistan. Uh, local NGOs, those that they are working on the, um, on humanitarian activities and some development, they're also open. Uh, the most organizations that are affected are the human rights and women's rights organizations are working for democracy because uh, the Taliban do not allow any of their activities uh, to start. So the Taliban are not uh, basically closing their, those injuries, but Taliban do not allow their activities to take place. And their activities in nature are such that even if the Taliban would allow, it's going to be very difficult to, uh, to continue those activities in terms of raising awareness, advocacy, and these things. So injuries can definitely help, especially uh, if we say that let's at the first, uh, in the first phase, they can prioritize uh, providing humanitarian support because right now we are facing a harsh winter with national starvation. Uh, in the meantime, uh, slowly and gradually, I'm, I, I'm, I'm confident that the communities will reorganize themselves. And then some activities in terms of development, peace building, conflict resolution will begin to uh, start because I, I was talking to a UN organization yesterday that they were providing shelter to uh, the victims of violence, especially women. And my question was that, fine, you're doing that and that's great. But before, previously, we had Ministry of Women's Affairs and Ministry of Interior and informal structure helping the families with prevention or if it happens with the management of the conflict. Uh, so <coughs> providing support to the woman is one side. But then on top of that, we also need to have the mechanism in place that will help the families or the communities to resolve their conflicts. So I think though for those kind of activities, in a matter of few months, I think uh, many initiatives will begin to take place. It's just the NGOs working on women's rights, human rights, and democracy. Those ones need to wait, and then we have to see what changes come in light of that. It could be seen whether they can resume their activities or not. So NGOs can help by being on the ground, by providing services, and by uh, partnering with local internationals. Sorry, I'm muted. Uh, thank you for the clarification, Nargis John. Um, I think uh, they mean international NGOs. How can the international NGOs help um, uh, with, the, with the process of, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, okay. Just, just I give you, uh, I mean, previously I told you for those NGOs that they have presence in Afghanistan, such as the one that um, Zuhra John is working and some others. They are directly, some activities they are directly implementing themselves and some activities they are partnering with local organizations. In case of uh, EPDR organizations, uh, we also partner very recently with, um, uh, with a UK-based organization that they don't have presence and they don't want to have presence in Afghanistan, but they designed a project together with us and they said we will help you with the fundraising. So I think many of the, uh, especially women organization that we may lose them if they don't get any support, especially or in like, and they are providing services for the women, the international NGOs can begin to identify organizations, can partner with them, can design projects and collaboration and consultation with them. And then they can do the implementation where the international NGOs can help them with the fundraising, project management, grants management, reporting, and monitoring. Thank you so much. Uh, that's great. Uh, now um, our time is running out. I, uh, I'm afraid I have to um, start bringing the session into close. And um, I, I would like to thank uh, everyone on behalf of myself, on behalf of European Network of Migrant Women, um for coming today and making this event happen uh thank you very much have a great evening and um uh, let's stay in touch and uh, stand with afghan women and help afghan help and support afghan women uh including us on our very difficult journey um uh we are not there yet and we are not even halfway through um, so we need every woman's support all over the world, and um, yeah, we we uh, look forward to working with uh, some of you, and we are very honored and grateful in working with uh, so many great, amazing Afghan women right now as well. Thank you very much.